David Phillips, welcome to the CFO Masters Series. Thank you. Procter & Gamble is the eighth largest company in the world by market capitalisation and the 14th largest US company by profit. It's said that three billion times each day P&G brands touch the lives of people around the world and certainly some of the most recognisable brands on the planet reside in the P&G stable. As the head of finance for Australia and New Zealand, how do you get your head around the company's incredible breadth and depth? Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Whether it's uh, selling laundry powder to uh, the third world in India or it's selling high-end $800 co cosmetics to people in Japan, there's a huge breadth of, um, there's a huge breadth of uh, brands and businesses and categories that P&G play in. However, the one constant that we always look at when we're looking at our business and categories is the consumer and remarkably the consumer is very similar across all aspects and all categories of the business. We have to make sure that we understand that consumer and constantly give them a proposition that they see value in and are prepared to pay for. Procter & Gamble is a company that drives billions of dollars worth of sales through intensive brand management and one of the biggest advertising budgets in the world. How does this affect the way that you manage the finances of Procter & Gamble in Australia and New Zealand? Well, just like any investment, um, advertising, you know, advertising needs to have a return on investment. We obviously spend a lot more than a lot of other companies in this area, just like uh, investment banks uh, or Macquarie spend money on infrastructure and Qantas spend money on aeroplanes. One of our biggest investments that we do is spend money on advertising. So we have a very, very regular, rigorous tracking program. Every advertising, every advertisement that we put on TV, every dollar that we spend in the trade, we look at it as a major investment, just like we would look at a, at a share, you know, a share or a physical asset. So we do have a tracking program. We do have a number of analysts and uh, some a lot of uh, IT that also helps us uh, to, you know, to to ascertain what the payout is on those investments. I imagine that supply chain management, cost control and resource planning are critical to the success of Procter & Gamble. Do you see yourself as a specialist CFO, one that understands the vagaries and challenges of fast-moving consumer goods? Yes, definitely been in the business now or the FMCG industry now for coming up for 10 years. Felt that obviously FMCG has definitely become a niche for me. Uh, fortunately enough that it is a, it's a big enough industry worldwide that I've been able to, uh, you know, that, that obviously it will continue to create opportunities as well. The, uh, where the head of finance or the finance director or the CFO really can play a critical role in FMCG is creating that competitive advantage on cost. Now whether that is creating, if, whether that is helping design cost efficient uh, supply chains, whether it's making sure that we use our technology locally to become uh, more efficient uh, as possible. The key role is always to stay one head, one step in, in front on, on cost. And the CFO is, uh, is, is probably the key player in, uh, in that area. What's the most difficult part of your job? Definitely the, the most difficult part of my job that I find is really continual organisation development. Okay, I, in my organisation I have a, you know, 23 to, to 25 analysts and they're absolutely fantastic but also very young and it's how do you continually uh, drive those uh, people, how do you develop those, uh, those, those young people. PNG is very unique, we're a promote from within organisation. So the future CFO of our company, the future finance director of Australia has to come from within. And one of the largest parts of my role is developing that organisation. We generally hire people at the graduate level. So uh, it's, people do come in a little bit fresh and we have to make sure that within a very short period of time, they're able to do the jobs of their counterparts in other FMGG companies um, and make sure that, uh, you know, the, that they are capable in a very, very short period of time. You've been with Procter & Gamble for nearly 10 years. What do you think has guided your career development over that time? A couple of things. I'm very, very fortunate again that I do work for a company that values um, career development. Um, they're very good at identifying young talent early, um, providing disproportionate support to those people and providing roles and opportunities both within Australia and internationally that allows them to develop. So I have a lot to uh, thank for, for the company. Um, personally, I've had a couple of mantras. Obviously, one is that I honestly believe that you get credit 
uh, or your a, a CFO is, is really seen as a, when things go very, very wrong or things go very, very well. So as I treat my day-to-day -day work plan, what I try to do is make sure that nothing goes wrong, but minimise the effort that is needed to do that, or minimise the day-to-day -day work, creating enough capacity so I can do as much breakthrough work as possible. And it's really about getting that mix right, understanding how you can get the basics right, the day-to-day -day stuff right, so you don't get a million, multi-million dollar overspend in your, in your basic budget because you're not going to be rewarded for doing that, but you're definitely going to be not rewarded for, for actually having that overspend. Then creating that capacity so you can do the breakthrough work. You can work with, uh, you know, work a lot of more of the upstream stuff, the strategic thinking and so forth. By any standard, you are a young CFO. What role has ambition and a hunger for success played in your career development? Definitely have become a lot more ambitious over the last, uh, over the last 10 years. Initially, I actually started at Procter & Gamble when I was uh, uh, 23 years old. And at that point, I was actually, before I came along, I was weighing up whether I would go financial services industry or a, a multinational in the commercial field. And uh, at that point, had very little idea of what an FMCG field could, could come. Quickly as I started, though, in the organisation, I could actually tangibly see uh, the, you know, the products that I was selling, the sizes of the businesses that I was dealing with, I quickly became uh, quite ambitious to, to move up through the ranks and actually get hold of bigger and bigger businesses and actually become more influential on those, on those businesses. Um, so I obviously, uh, throughout my career I've uh, moved overseas quite early, within the first few years moved to, um, to, to Singapore to take on uh, different responsibilities. Now looking forward, um, I'm you know, very, very happy where I am, obviously managing a, a hundreds of millions of dollar business in Australia. Um, but moving forward, I'm obviously ambitious to, to move into, back into the region or internationally uh, to, to have new opportunities and new experiences in, in different markets as well. So I think you've got constantly be looking with your career one, two or three steps ahead. Where are you going to be next? What, what are some of the things that you're going to be doing?